What's up everybody, I'm Jason and welcome back to some more tips and tricks for the Canon EOS R5. In the last video, I looked at how to customize the dials on your camera, and in this video, I'm going to follow on that with the buttons. It's probably not an understatement to say that the EOS R5 has a lot of features. I've done more than 30 episodes now on getting more out of your R5, and I haven't even covered all of the still photography side of things, let alone the video. So if you're just tuning in here, you might want to go check out the rest of my R5 tips playlist. It also goes without saying that with all those functions available, it's easy to find yourself in a situation where you need to get at or change one of those settings quickly. One option you have for this is to set up a custom My Menu, which I've covered in a previous video, and I'll put a link to that up in the cards. However, there's also a solid dozen buttons and four dials that you can customize too. So let's look at customizing these buttons in detail. To start off, let's quickly talk about the buttons you absolutely can't mess with at all. These are the menu, info, magnifier, quick control, and playback buttons. They do what they say on the label and that's it. There's nothing else that you can do. So what buttons can be customized? Basically to one extent or another, everything else on the camera. There's an even dozen buttons in the R5's button customization menu. And these are the shutter release, half press state, movie record, mode, AF on, auto exposure lock, the star, autofocus point selection, depth of field preview, lens, multifunction, the MFN, LCD panel info switching slash illumination, set, and the multi-controller. Moreover, aside from the shutter release, these buttons can be configured to have separate functions for when the camera is in still photography or movie modes. The shutter release is a bit of a special case, but I'll get to that in a second. Further, the button configurations are saved as part of the custom shooting modes, so you can use that feature to make more specialized setups without having to compromise your general camera settings. So let's start looking at customizing your camera's buttons. I'm going to start with the three buttons that aren't found on the customized button menu, but still can be customized and have the most limited options. These are rate, lock, and erase. The inability to customize the rate button has been an ongoing frustration for many Canon users for quite a while now. The idea of rating images on the camera for faster editing later is certainly a good one. However, most third-party image and video editing packages don't understand these ratings. Combine the limited third-party support with the increased complexity of the R5 and being able to reconfigure the rate button like most of the other buttons really would be useful. That said, there are a limited number of configuration options available for it. You'll find the options in the Play 4 menu under the Rate slash Voice Memo button. Five options are available to choose from relating to rating, protecting images, and recording voice memos. When the rate button is configured for rating images, the number of image or number of stars that applies or switches through can be set here too. Unfortunately, these options only apply when the camera is in review mode, and the rate button can't be used for anything while the camera is in the shooting mode. Moreover, if you choose to change the rate to Im erase images, this button or this doesn't free up the erase button for other uses in the shooting modes. Moving on to the erase images button. Over on the custom functions for menu page, you'll find an option entitled default erase option. In that menu, you'll find four options, which are Cancel is selected, Erase is selected, Erase Raw is selected, and Erase Non-Raw is selected. The default is Cancel. Anytime you go to erase an image on the camera, you'll be presented with a confirmation dialog allowing you to accept and erase the image or cancel the action. The setting, this setting controls which option in that dialog will be selected by default. So in the default configuration of Cancel, when you go to erase an image, you'll have to select the Erase option and press Set, assuming you're not using the Touch UI, to delete the image. If this option is set to Erase Selected instead, then you just have to press Set when the confirmation dialog appears to delete the image. 
If you shoot in RAW plus JPEG, you'll also see an option to delete the RAW or the non-RAW image. Selecting one of those by default is what the last two options are for. One thing to note, if you select one of the RAW plus JPEG options and you shoot RAW only, the camera will default to cancel, not erase. The final fixed function button that still has some minimal configuration is the lock button. The options for the lock button are found on the Setup 4 menu under the Multifunction Lock entry. The Multifunction Lock can be configured to lock any combination of the main dial, quick control dials, multi-controller, touch screen, and or the lens control ring. You can also uncheck all of the options and the button basically does nothing. For me, this is another example of a button that I'd like a little bit more general use or access to. I've never used the locks on any of my cameras, and much like the rate button, while I can appreciate the utility for those that do use it, for those of us that don't, it's just another button we can't do something more useful with. With the three limited configuration buttons out of the way, let's move on to the buttons you can customize through the Customize Buttons menu on the Custom Function 3 menu page. The first thing you may notice about this menu screen is that there are two columns of settings for most of the buttons. Yep, buttons can have different functionality for movie and still shooting. This, of course, makes a lot of sense if you think about it. What you need in still shooting is going to or can potentially be different from what you need in movie shooting. So while still shooting, you might want to have the exposure button lock the exposure, but in movie mode, you might want to have it bring up zebra stripes instead. Either way, there are 64 different camera functions that can be assigned to most of the buttons in this menu. The two biggest exceptions are the shutter half press and the multi-controller. So starting with the shutter releases half-pressed state. In the Customize Buttons menu, the shutter release can only be customized in photography mode and only has three possible options. Metering and AF start, the default, metering start, and auto exposure lock while held. If you're shooting stills, fully pressing the shutter release always releases the shutter. That said, you can configure the shutter button's function in movie mode, but it's not in the customized buttons menu. Instead, you'll need to switch your camera into movie mode and head over to the Shoot 7 menu and look for the Shutter Button Function for Movies entry. There, you'll have options for full and half press of the shutter release when the camera is in movie mode. So in that menu, the half press can be configured for metering plus servo AF, metering plus one shot AF, or metering only. Both of those AF options uh, will function when the camera is recording. Consequently, if you set the half press to say servo AF, and you have movie servo disabled normally, you can half press the shutter release while shooting to do servo focusing. Fully pressing the shutter release can either be set to disabled or set to stop or start the movie. If you want to trigger movie recording using a cable release or another remote plugged into the N3 cable release port, you will need to change this setting to start slash stop recording. The other oddity is the multi-controller, which only has two options in the customize buttons menu. The two options are off or direct AF point select. So I covered moving the autofocus point, including changing this setting back in actually what was my first video, tip one. So if you wanna see more about that, again, I'll have a link to that video. That leaves the 10 other buttons that I haven't covered yet. And those can be customized with, as I said, up to 64 different functions or one of up to 64 different functions. Now, I'm not going to talk about each of those individually as that would make this video incredibly long. Instead, I'm going to quickly touch on the ones that I think are either most confusing or have some potential uses that might not be super obvious. If you have a question about one of the settings I don't cover, leave it in the comments below and I'll try and answer it if I can. Starting off with the set AF point to center option. 
This is the default action for the set button. However, if you have the multi-controller set to direct AF point selection, pressing it also performs this function. So you probably don't need a separate button for it. Personally, I'd recommend both enabling auto a direct AF point selection on the multi-controller and changing this button, this function to something more useful or changing the set button to something more useful. Next up is the switch to registered AF function. The registered AF function it's talking about is configured here in the button settings and gives you limited control over the AF method, tracking sensitivity, and acceleration and deceleration sensitivity. This can be used as a toggle between different AF methods instead of using, for example, dual rear button focusing. Next is a function I talked about in tip number two, so I'm not going to go into much detail here, but it's direct AF method selection. If you're interested in more detail on that one, again, I'll put a card up in the corner of the video wherever, yeah, there. Moving along, there are two different eye detection options. One is eye detect AF, and eye detect, the other is eye detection. Eye detection simply toggles eye detection on or off. It's the same as going into the AF1 menu and changing the setting there. The other one, eye detect AF, will, regardless of how the eye detect setting is set, cause the AF system to start running and use eye detection. It's basically an autofocus metering start button that specifically forces the autofocus system into face plus tracking mode with eye detection enabled. So in other words, if you're using, or if your normal AF method is set to say single point and you have a button set to eye detect AF, pressing that button will cause the AF system to automatically start in face plus tracking mode with eye detection enabled and then when you release it goes back to your single point. Skipping along over a bunch of options, let's now look at dial function settings. Uh, this is the default for the multi-function button, and this allows you to program up to five different settings that can be changed using a specialized menu and the dials. This effectively replaces the function buttons that were on the front of the or in, that were in front of the top LCD on Canon's DSLRs. You can customize which functions show up in the dial function menu by pressing info when you set this option and selecting the functions that are most useful to you. On my camera, I have my dial function menu set to ISO, drive mode, one-shot servo AF, white balance, and flash exposure compensation. I chose these partly for muscle memory from my DSLRs and partly because they're the settings that I thought I most want have easy access to. Next up, let's look at the image replay and magnify image replay functions. Image replay does the same thing as hitting the playback button, and it's only available to be set on the set button. Now, my recommendation here is that if you're going to have a second review or playback button other than the normal one, use the magnified option instead as it will automatically zoom in with a configured magnification and potentially start the view where the autofocus point was, or in the center if no focus point was used or it was set that way. You can configure the default magnification used by the magnified review button by jumping over to the magnification approximate entry on the play for menu. There are six options in that menu and they are 2x, 4x, 8x, and 10x using central magnification, actual size from the selected autofocus point, and same as last magnification from center. Note this setting also affects the behavior of the magnification button when it's pressed in review mode too. On my camera, I have it set to actual size from the selected AF point. Since the primary reason I magnify an image in review is to check focus, this gets me to the highest magnification and looking where I generally want to be the fastest. Moving along, if you're a prolific user of focus bracketing, you might want to consider assigning a button to the create folder function. This will let you create a new folder for your focus stacks at the touch of a button without having to go through the menus. 
You could take this a step further, since button configs are saved as part of custom shooting modes, and create a custom shooting mode for your focus bracketing. Unfortunately, you can't have focus bracketing enabled in that custom shooting mode by default, but it's a step in the right direction. Wrapping up the options, I want to touch on maximize screen brightness, display off, and switch between viewfinder and screen. Maximize screen brightness temporarily does what the name implies, sets the display, the rear to screen's brightness to the highest setting. Unfortunately, with the R5, Canon dropped the brightness sensor that the 5D Mark IV had, and so it can't automatically adjust the brightness of the screen based on ambient lighting conditions. With a button set to this option, you have a quick way to brighten the screen to make it easier to see in daylight conditions. One place that might be useful for this is the LCD info switch slash backlight button if you don't really use the top LCD panel. Next is the display off function. This is essentially a shortcut to turning off the displays and sleeping the camera and triggers the same set of actions as the display off timer does under power savings. It will run the sensor cleaning routine, turn off the display and viewfinder, and power down most of the functions in the camera, but leaves the camera in a fast resume state. In this state, the camera will respond quickly when you touch the shooting a shooting control or the viewfinder sensor is triggered. Finally, the switch between viewfinder and screen function. This allows you to manually toggle between whether you're using the viewfinder or the screen. If you choose to use this, you probably will also want to consider changing the screen viewfinder display on the setup three menu from one of the auto options to either viewfinder or screen. Something to be aware of, the viewfinder sensor will be triggered by anything that's close to it. And this applies to when the camera is in the display off state as opposed to fully powered down or asleep. So if you turn the display off and put your camera in a bag or have it hanging from your shoulder, the proximity of the bag, your clothes, or your arm can wake the camera up repeatedly and keep it from automatically powering down. If you're not going to use the camera for any length of time, you'll probably want to switch it off with the power switch instead of relying on display off or the, the auto display power off. You could also disable the viewfinder auto switching, which does disable the viewfinder sensor and use a button to switch between the viewfinder and the screen. But quite honestly, that feels a little clunky to me. Admittedly, there are a ton more options for button functions, and I really covered have only covered a few here. If you have questions regarding some of the other functions that I didn't cover, feel free to ask them in the comments below. And as I said, if I can answer them, I will. If you found this useful or maybe a bit informative, let me know by smashing that like button. If this kind of thing seems like it might be your kind of thing, maybe consider subscribing too. Remember, you can't forget to unsubscribe later if you don't subscribe now. Finally, if you know someone who might also find this useful, please share it with them. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.